anybody in Montana that can keep these people away, please keep them away. Just for your own, do whatever means ne whatever means necessary. Do not even talk to these people. Do not let them on your property. Come all you Montanans, so young and so fine, seek not your fortune in the Otter Creek mine. For the Arch Coal Corporation is a criminal band, they'll break down your body and poison the land. In West Virginia, where arch coal runs free, they cut down the mountains and burn every tree. They bury your village, force families to flee from the ruined remains of their demon debris. My name is Delta Murner, and I live here in Blair, West Virginia, at this, this service station right here. Um, Blair, West Virginia is a really unique and wonderful place, but it has also been um, really devastated by Arch Coal and some other companies who have come in um, doing both surface mining and some underground mining. Um, one of the, the really wonderful things about Blair is that, so Blair, West Virginia um, is the site of the, the largest uprising in labor history in the U.S. Um, and actually where we're standing, there was miners that marched through here for fighting for their own rights back in 1921. Um, they camped out at the ball field that's just across the river from us and they marched up the mountain that's just on the side of us right here. Um, and this is really the heart of, the, of union building and of um, resistance against some of the, the really problematic conditions that the coal company um, was causing back in the, the early um, 1920s and beyond that and that history is all still in these hills so when we go up on the ridge line just the the ridge that's right over there um, we just found a, a nest of a machine gun nest up there just the other day that's still fully intact and um, that kind of history is all over these hills and um, not only is there this rich history that deserves to be told for, for really for the whole America should know. It's something that's important for, um, for everyone in this country. But the community of Blair itself is also a really, um, a really wonderful place to be. You know, and there's a lot of great people here. Um, but that, the community here has been all but torn apart by, by Arch Coal. Um, and a lot of that started back in in the 90s really when Arch was coming in um, starting some some strip mines and um, the the most devastating thing um, I mean, we can talk about there's really the coal companies have uh, a number of different impacts on any community um, but the biggest things for us here have been the buyouts where they literally tear apart these communities and tore apart Blair and then also the environmental impacts blasting nearby, there's truck traffic, there's dust, there's noise, it just, if you're that close to that kind of a mine site, it's just overwhelming to the point where you just have, you pull in your hair out and you just have to leave. Sometimes, you know, you've already turned them down in terms of, of buying you out, and by the time you do get so frustrated, you go, you're not going to even get the price that you should get because your property is so much worse off because you've got these giant mines behind you. So the property values would go down and, you know, people are convinced sometimes it's better to go now and get what you can than wait until everything is torn apart. Whole companies have lied to people in terms of saying so-and-so has sold and so-and-so has sold. You know, to get the first person to sell, they've actually lied about neighbors who have, quote, sold when they haven't because they know that once you get in and get one person to sell, then their neighbors are also going to feel like they're much more vulnerable and they may sell. And, and it starts like that and finally, you know, out of the community of 15 families that might be there, you only have two left. And it's very difficult. 
you just it, that becomes insurmountable because your schools are gone, your churches are gone, the people that are in your community are gone. So what do you have left? I mean, you've always valued your land and your family and your home place, but without the community that is also there, what what else will hold you there? You know, I mean, it's the insidious nature of all of this that these are the things that that happen before you get to a legal question of how you might stop them or how you might prevent further damage. The coal train proposal would completely ruin this. Instead of removing the blight of this highway, we would get a different one of 9 to 18 trains a day, 1.5 miles long each. Instead of new urban fabric, we would have traffic jams. Instead of reliable buses to West Seattle, we would have delays, backup, and frustration as buses waited in traffic jams. Instead of freight mobility, again, trucks would be stuck in that traffic and who knows what the impact to local business and the port would be if trucks can't move. Instead of clean and quiet air, finally, we would have to deal with up to 500 to 1,200 pounds of coal dust in our city every week. Imagine as much as 30 tons per year in our air deposited in our homes, in our backyard porches, Belltown families, market vendors, food growers, Pioneer Square and ID residents, no one will be spared. Instead of making progress to decrease the number of children suffering from asthma, local kids will be breathing this toxic dust. Instead of the occasional train going through Olympic Sculpture Park, Myrtle Edwards Park, Golden Gardens, Carkeek Park, our most beloved city parks, imagine 1.5 mile long dust spewing trains ruining the healthy experience of being at the shore. In, instead of levering, leveraging the amazing economic benefit of creating a beautiful new civic space in the waterfront, new housing, new social venues, new business, new vibrant community life, we'd be left with dirty, noisy, unhealthy blight. So it doesn't have to be this way, as you know. If we care about clean energy and our shared environment, if we care about our children's health, if we care about the potential of a new waterfront, if we care about the pros prosperity and beauty of our whole state, we have to stop the coal trains. When corporations are, say, Massey Energy or Arch Coal, uh, are performing their operations, they're just blowing up mountains, taking the rubble, putting it over the edge of the valley, uh, clogging up streams. There's plenty of environmental legislation at the Clean Water Act that's constantly amended to accommodate their needs. And that's all an externality. That's not something they, they don't have to pay to reforest. Uh, there's mining reclamation that's required to return a mountain to its natural contours, but that's a joke. They replant with prairie grasses because the soil is not suitable for trees anymore. I visited uh, landowners in Kentucky who had their land illegally mined and the soil is gone, the topsoil is gone, all that's left is gravel that's compacted and tree roots can't take hold or break through all of that. Uh, so there's no reclamation, it's not the same thing, it looks like a golf course from hell. Anyone who has a community that they love and believe in um, needs to band together and resist this kind of mining and I think it's the same story for folks in out in Montana um, and this kind of what they've done here what the companies have done needs to be a warning sign and what the community has done needs to be inspiration um, in order to to stop arch coal from coming in. There were last year 18 coal train derailments and you've probably read about them one you know dumped Coal, coal on two teenage girls and buried them alive. The Bull Mountain Outfit shipped two test train loads of coal to Vancouver preparatory to shipping it overseas. 
and when they got it to Vancouver, both train loads were on fire. And you know, you can't put out a coal fire with water. And they wound up dumping both those train loads in the ocean there at Vancouver. The finances is the place to get at Arch, if you really want to get at them. Through their banks, how fast are they reclaiming, um, how successful is their reclamation, when are the bonds going to be released, how much are they in hock on their reclamation bonds. Those are areas of vulnerability. Most of this coal will be transported by BNSF. Burlington Northern Santa Fe, which is owned by Warren Buffett, recently acquired by Warren Buffett. Um, I encourage Warren Buffett. I know he has a family. I know he lives on this beautiful planet, our very special planet. I urge you, Mr. Buffett, to please think deeply about what your trains will be carrying from the Powder River Basin in Wyoming through Montana, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon, across our wonderful Pacific Ocean to be burned in Asia. Please think deeply. How many billions of dollars do you really need? What Arch Coal has done in, in Blair, West Virginia has been um, it, was, it was really through a buyout process. So they came in and they offered um, pretty high sums of money to some of the first people that they bought out. And once they were able to do that, there was infighting in families and people wanting to leave and people pushing for that kind of money. Now, not everybody got offered that money. Um, you know, was those, those first few ones got offered a lot and kind of started that, that momentum. It pushed, once you have one person sell out, it's that much easier. Um, and you've got places like up Pigeon Roost, um, which is one of the hollers up here, where there's one home that's left up there. And there was easily 27 homes up and down that holler back in the 90s. And um, once that first person sells out, then they can get everybody else for a lot cheaper. Um, and, when they, and in that process, too, they make people sign um, notices saying that they're never going to come back to Blair, that they won't live within so many miles of the community. Um, and that they, they're not going to talk about their experience with those buyouts. So a lot of the communities will end up with gag orders and that kind of thing where they, they can't talk about what that, that process was like for them. Um, and then it's also fear tactics because um, folks around here understand what happens when the coal companies move in. They know that, um, you know, in Blair what, what has happened is when they were mining, when they had um, the drag line up here, it was heavy dust falling on people all the time. It was, you got equipment running 24-7, so what used to be a peaceful community is now, there's constant noise. Um, and they destroy the things that are most basic to our life. So that's our air and our water. Um, and those things are really destroyed where, you know, they've got dust falling down on people, um, causing respiratory problems, folks can't breathe anymore. And like for us here, we've had orange water come out of our tap. Um, most of the wells that are in this town are too contaminated to drink. Um, some of the testing that we've done shows high levels of selenium. Um, it's, we've got lead and arsenic and um, a whole slew of heavy metals that are coming into people's wells now. And literally, they run colors. You know, literally, we've had the stream behind our house up here this past summer come in, run in pure black coming off of one of these sites. Um, with white foam on top of it, and it smelled like it was septic. You know, like the whole town smelled septic from, from what was coming out of this, this stream, and that's coming off of one of the Arch sites. If Arch Coal and other major coal companies get their, get their permits, um, they're putting us all at grave risk for our, for our health, from, from up from Montana all the way down through Washington and, and Oregon. And we'll do everything we can. I think we should do everything we can just to, to stop that. Those calves, as baby calves, they're going over there right next to the coal mine and I think their respiratory systems are getting compromised by all the dust. Be it coal dust or the dust, you know, just dirt dust that's kicked up by the explosions because they they blow it up to break up the coal so they can get to it. 
and this orange cloud that there's signs all over the place around those coal mines that say, you know, danger, orange cloud, you know, avoid, you know, blah, blah, blah. And every time they're gonna, gonna blast, there's a big siren. So if you're over there, you know they're about to blast. But, you know, you have a little calf that's down here and there's dust all over the place and they're breathing all that stuff in because we lose them to respiratory disease and we vaccinate them twice and still we lose them and we never used to. So I think that's a direct result of them living over there by the coal mine. Once they extract the coal before it's sent to, um, to coal-fired power plants to be burned, it has to be processed. And that processing um, entails pulverizing the coal into a very um, fine powder and then washing it. And when they wash the coal, um, they're using highly toxic chemicals um, to wash the coal and that generates a great deal of liquid waste. And this liquid waste um, has fine particles of coal, which is not inert. Coal itself has a lot of toxic metals in it. Um, so this liquid slurry that they generate from the coal washing process has um, fine particles of coal, the chemicals used in the washing process, and then the liquid, the, the water. Um, and this liquid coal waste has to go somewhere. So um, what companies like Arch Coal or um, Alpha Natural Resources or Peabody Coal, what they do to dispose of, dispose of this liquid waste is they um, store, either store it in massive impoundments, billion gallon impoundments on the top of um, mountaintop removal mines in West Virginia and Eastern Kentucky, um, or they inject it into abandoned underground coal mines. This waste doesn't necessarily stay in these places um, where they put it, and so um, there are numerous examples of um, impoundment breaks um, from, from the liquid that is stored on top of these mountaintops where um, the Buffalo Creek disaster in, 19, in the 1970s is one example of that where um, one of these coal impoundments broke loose and um, a torrent of coal waste went down the hollow and killed 125 people and left thousands of people homeless. Um, more recently in Martin County, Kentucky, um, there was a coal impoundment breach um, that released um, millions and millions of um, gallons of this liquid coal waste in, and contaminated hundreds of miles of waterways. Companies like Arch and Peabody, they're coal companies. Um, you know, unlike Shell and Exxon and some other energy companies, they don't have a diverse portfolio. All they do is coal, that's all they know. Um, they are a one mission kind of company. Um, and so their mission is to find coal resources, get them out of the ground and sell them to whoever is willing to pay for them. Um, and that's what Arch is trying to do in Montana. Um, they know that there's coal there. There's no, they know that there's coal there. They can get cheap from the state and the federal government. Um, and they're finding buyers in Asia to buy that coal. Um, so I think it's the job of citizens to you know, raise the awareness of the impacts that that could cause, both in the local environment and, and globally. Um, and also you know, to make sure that if, if Arch is coming into a place like the Tongue River Valley that um, they pay taxpayers what they should pay um, to get those coal resources and that they're not given away you know cheap coal um, artificial artificially cheap coal because it's you know subsidized by taxpayers like you and me
Here in Montana, the Tongue River flows. From Bernie to Miles City, it sings as it rolls. But the arch coal strip mine will plunder its shine. All that they care for is making a dime. In West Virginia, where arch coal runs free, they cut down the mountains and burn every tree. They bury your village, force families to flee from the ruined remains of their demon debris. My name is Elena Buffalo Spirit. I'm a painter. I love art. I use it as art therapy. Nakivich Puomota. Hoito for Hansa done it. Hotanet Ikevas durst Hansa done it. Nahito hot Namehatanen in here in the Hussey shit. Namet Pivot done in Ninapimit die Hajam, what's the name of it? Nicha in here. Namet O he Emihaj Piva. Ninap Nanmakir near Amoetam. Get my tub at Hannah. Get a horn on my head shed. Nimm it in his yacht to women. Nimm it with some adant to women. Yachtsman. I'm a member of the Northern Cheyenne Nation, the Sutta branch of the tribe. There's two branches, the Tsistas and Sutta. I'm of the Sutta branch. I was raised along the Tun River Valley. In fact, I have land along the Tun River. I'm a grandmother. That's why I'm speaking out at this point. I would like um, to share with you that um, in September I was walking with my doggy along the Tun River in southeastern Montana. and. Um, Gorgeous land, beautiful alluvial property. And um, as we were walking along, I saw the um, white tailed horse, uh, white tailed horses, white tailed deer running across the river. And, and um, it was beautiful. The river is clean. And um, in September, the cottonwood trees are um, golden and the leaves were floating down. and I thought about this beautiful land and I, I woke up. I woke up finally and I said, I have to speak out, I have to do something to preserve this land, this beautiful air, um, alluvial valley, it's peaceful. I have to do something to speak up about where I grew up. And, and the reason I'm saying this, I know about the proposed Otter Creek coal mine and the proposed coal train railroads. I am totally opposed to all that because I'm a cancer survivor. The uh, coal dust, etc., will cause many diseases among our people. And I take care of my, myself because cancer is um, very frightening. I'm 11 years in remission and I try every which way to stay healthy and I, I try to share that with my family, my grandchildren, my daughters and try to say hey take care of your life, take care of your health and one of the things that concerns me about the coal mines is the coal dust causing cancer and there's a community called Coal Strip, which is 23 miles north of the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in southeastern Montana. And I know of um, the pollution that it causes. It's a big four power plant. And, it, and there's an increase of cancer that I know of in that community. And the pollution floats onto the southeastern part of my tribal lands, the Northern Cheyenne Nation. Uh, I don't want to see a, a train running across our lands. Um, 
on the east side of the Tun River are um, some of our ancient um, burial grounds. Um, one of my grandmothers, her name was Josie Limpy. She told me when she was 85 years old in the late 70s, early 80s, that some of our uh, most sacred ceremonial people are buried on the east side of the Tun River. She also shared with me that, <laughs> excuse me, that a lot of our medicinal plants grow on both sides of the river. Um, she also told me that the east side of the Tun River, each branch represents an old Cheyenne camp. Uh, she said that in the early 1900s, somewhere there, um, they were asked, our people were asked to move to the west side of the Tun River. They were offered $25, flour, coffee, sugar, and they were told, you, you can move back in five years. But she understood at the age of 85, she said, who's going to move back after five years? And in those days, the only mode of transportation they had were wagon and horses. So I feel that this property all along the foothills, east side of the Tun River, into the Otter Creek coal mine area, proposed area, is all ancient Cheyenne and the Lakota country. I want to talk to you about Arch Coal. I think that these coal companies are ruthless. They don't care about family. They don't care about land destruction. They don't care about water destruction or the air quality. It's all about money. They're going to destroy my lands, the Northern Cheyenne lands, and all the landowners that will be affected by the Otter Creek coal mine. I do not agree with this. I'm sorry, but I want our lives to continue in the peaceful, harmonious way that we've been living for years. Um, one of the things that concerns me is the, um, I have seen the destruction in other coal mine areas, the reclamation. Yes, they, they say they're going to reclaim the land. It's never the same. I have concerns about the quality of life that we have, our peaceful, harmonious life we have now. And Arch Coal will not care. They won't care. Our ranchers and workers and natives will stand to stop Arch Coal from stripping our land. Stay away, Arch Coal, your death jobs won't do. Montanans don't welcome your greed driven crew. In West Virginia, where arch coal runs free, they cut down the mountains and burn every tree. They bury your village, force families to flee from the ruined remains of your demon debris. Come all you Montanans, so young and so fine, seek not your fortune in the Otter Creek mine. For the Arch Coal Corporation is a criminal band, they'll break down your body and poison the land.